Hello, my friend. Take a seat and let me tell you the scaly tale of the Dragon of St. Leonard's. One of the main dragon haunts in Sussex is at St. Leonard's Forest near Horsham, a scrap of the ancient Wealdham Forest, so named after one of the dragon legends that is set there. It is said that St. Leonard, a 6th century French hermit, once lived in St. Leonard's Forest. During a long battle with a dragon living there which he eventually won, St. Leonard was injured. It is said that God made white lilies spring forth from the ground where the saint's blood fell. Also asking what reward the saint wanted for freeing the local people from the dragon, he asked that snakes would be banished from the forest, and nightingales, which had disturbed the saint's prayers, would be silent. Dr. Andrew Board wrote in the 16th century that the nightingales didn't sing because they disturbed the devotions of a forest hermit. There is no proof that St. Leonard, a French saint and martyr, ever visited Sussex, though the legend may be attributed to him through a hermitage within the forest. Nevertheless, there is a recorded fragment of a traditional rhyme regarding the forest, which states, Here the adders never sting, nor the nightingales sing. Another version says he asked for the snakes to be made deaf, and this is echoed in another piece of superstition regarding snakes in Sussex, that hidden in the pattern on their bellies, adders have written the words, If I could hear as well as see, no mortal man should master me. Finally, it should be noted that there is a small place called Dragon's Green, just to the southwest of the forest. While this may be a reference to the legend of the dragon in St. Leonard's Forest, it may also be a reference to the personal name of Dragon. A family so named, natives of Roffey, lived in nearby Cowfold and gave their name to Dragon's Farm there, a place name which goes back to 1682. There is a second, much later story told of a dragon in St. Leonard's Forest, given in an unusually detailed account in the form of a pamphlet produced in 1614, and thought by some, as with so many scary tales, to be a story concocted by smugglers to keep people away from the area. The pamphlet, entitled True and Wonderful, begins with an admission that some stories printed in pamphlets previously had been false, but states that hopefully the readers will understand that this pamphlet is not one of those. A copy of the item can be found in the library of the Sussex Archaeological Society in a document called the Harleian Miscellany, and is worth reading for the 16th century spelling alone. The item is quoted verbatim as follows. A discourse relating a strange and monstrous serpent or dragon, lately discovered and yet living to the great annoyance and diverse slaughters both of men and cattle by his strong and violent poison. In Sussex, two miles from Horsham, in a wood called St. Leonard's Forest, and thirty miles from London, this present month of August 1614, with the true generation of serpents. In Sussex, there was a pretty market town called Horsham, near unto it a forest called St. Leonard's Forest, and there, in a vast and unfrequented place, heathy, vaulty, full of unwholesome shades and overgrown hollows, where this serpent is thought to be bred. But wheresoever bred, certain and too true it is, that there it yet lives. Within three or four miles, compass are its usual haunts, oftentimes at a place called Faygate, and it hath been seen within half a mile of Horsham, a wonder no doubt most terrible and noisome to the inhabitants thereabouts. There is always in his track or path left a glutinous and slimy matter, as by a small similitude we may perceive in a snail's, which is very corrupt and offensive to the scent, insomuch that they perceive the air to be putrefied with all, which must needs be very dangerous, for though the corruption of it cannot strike the outward part of a man unless heated into his blood, yet by receiving it in at any of our breathing organs, the mouth or nose, it is by authority of all authors writing in that kind, mortal and deadly, as one thus saith. Noxia serpentum est admixto sanguine pestis, which translates as a poisonous snake mixed with blood as a pest, whatever that means. Now, on with the reading. 
This serpent, or dragon as some call it, is reputed to be nine feet or rather more in length and shaped almost in the form of an axle tree of a cart. A quantity of thickness in the mid-est and somewhat smaller at both ends. The former part, which he shoots forth as a neck, is supposed to be an L long, with a white ring as it were of scales about it. The scales along his back seem to be blackish, and so much as is discovered under his belly appeareth to be red. For I speak of no nearer description than of a reasonable ocular distance, for coming too near it hath already been too dearly paid for, as you shall hear hereafter. It is likewise discovered to have large feet, but the eye may be there deceived, for some suppose that serpents have no feet, but glide upon certain ribs and scales, which both defend them from the upper part of their throat unto the lower part of their belly, and also cause them to move much the faster. For so this doth, and rids away, as we call it, as fast as a man can run. He is of countenance very proud, and at the sight of men or cattle will raise his neck upright, and seem to listen and look about with great arrogancy. There are likewise on either side of him discovered two great bunches so big as a large football, and, as some think, will in time grow to wings. But God, I hope, will, to defend the poor people of the neighbourhood, that he shall be destroyed before he grows to fledge. He will cast his venom about four rods from him, as by woeful experience it was proved on the bodies of a man and a woman coming that way, who afterwards were found dead, being poisoned and very much swelled, but not preyed upon. Likewise, a man going to chase it, and as he imagined to destroy it with two mastiff dogs, as yet not knowing the great danger of it, his dogs were both killed, and he himself glad to return with haste to preserve his own life. Yet this is to be noted, that the dogs were not preyed upon, but slain and left whole. For his is thought to be, for the most part, in a coney warren, which he much frequents, and it is found much scanted and impaired in the increase it had wont to afford. These persons whose names are here under printed have seen this serpent, beside divers others, as the carriers of Horsham who lieth at the white horse in Southwark, and who can certify the truth of all that has here been related. John Steele, Christopher Holder, and a widow woman dwelling near Faygate. And there you have the story of the Dragon of St. Leonard's, which must be true because the pamphlet said so, and it was reported by people in a pub. I hope you found it enjoyable, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Have a safe journey home, my friend, but should you see any glutinous and slimy matter on your way, I'd walk just that little bit faster. <laughs>